Hi friends, I'm Jeffy G. I was in Nashville last week doing the typical tourist things. And that included going to some museums and seeing the history of music in Nashville. One of the things that struck me was how early vocalists, early singers like Elvis, Hank Williams, Patsy Cline, and Johnny Cash, and the equipment they used to record their vocals really influenced the sound that we're used to hearing for the next 50 or 60 years. It's amazing. Some of the early technology and early gear that they used to get that sound is remarkable, and it's great to see. But it occurred to me that today, with all the modern technology we have, you can actually acquire emulations of that early gear to get that high quality sound at a very low price. So in this video, I'm going to kind of translate what happened in the past and what plugins and gear you need today to achieve high quality vocals on a budget. When we think of Nashville, we can't help but think of the RCA B Studio. Its original mixing board in the background and its most recent mixing board in the foreground. But not all of the most famous studios are in that Nashville music row. One of the ones that pops into your mind is Sun Records, which is in Memphis. And similarly, it has some pretty vintage equipment that was used at the time. A lot of tube-based mixers, compressors, amplifiers and levelers, and some pretty old school mixing technology. One of the parallels that you find is that they all made use of the Teletronics LA-2A and the Universal Audio 1176, which came later. When we talk about emulating the vocals from the 50s and 60s out of Nashville or Memphis, it's unlikely that you're going to buy a mixing console. However, you can buy plugins that emulate some of the classic consoles. One that I like is this Lindell 80, which emulates a Nev mixing console. And it's got the basics. It's a preamp, it's got filters, there's a compressor built in, and it's got a noise gate. And you can control the color and sound of your recording with this plugin to emulate an older mixing console without owning the console. I'm inclined to put this on every track in my recording if I want to get that classic sound. Now, if modeling an older sound like a Nev console is not part of your goal, another plugin you would consider is this Brainworks SSL 4000E. This has a much cleaner sound with different controls, but again, it's very much like an old style mixing console. I would recommend it as well. Now we've talked about some of the rack gear you see in these old studios. A lot of them have a Universal Audio 1176. I like the Universal Audio plugins. You can get a subscription where you get an assortment of their plugins at a very low price and it always includes the 1176. The controls on this compressor are quite simple. It's got buttons that everybody knows how to use for the ratio and output, and you can make adjustments as you need to trim the peaks and valleys of some vocalists. If the universal audio isn't to your taste, another Oli that everyone relies on is the Teletronics LA-2A. This is the silver edition. Same old style controls, emulation of gear that came from the 60s. These sound great. They're used on a lot of recordings. When it comes to EQ, there's kind of two modes. The first mode is getting rid of the problem areas. And for that, I think using the EQ that's built into any DAW will do the job. So I'm not picky about which one you use. We're not really adding sound here. We're taking away problem areas. When it comes to adding sound, I like the Pultec style EQ. And you'll find this in disguise, sometimes called a vintage tube EQ. And it will let you add certain frequencies. Like, I like to add a little bit of high frequencies to give the impression of air a little bit more headspace. If you go down that road of the Universal Audio plugins, which are a little bit more expensive, you might choose to include the Neve 1073 preamp, an excellent plugin that's easy to learn how to use. And the results of the sound are excellent. Now, one thing you don't think about much is that in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, most people had no hi-fi equipment at home. So the way they consumed music 
The way they heard these early vocalists was either over the radio or through a jukebox. The idea of owning records and playing records at home really didn't take off until the late 50s and into the 60s, and it wasn't for everyone. Today, we just take it for granted that everybody has high quality music reproduction devices at home. We all have smartphones and hi-fi systems. We don't have turntables anymore, but we have digital streaming. There's certainly a generation that has no connection to the idea of the equipment that was necessary in the early days to reproduce high quality music at home. Now, a lot of those old studios had these Studer or Otari tape recorders, and I think those technologies are beyond the budget of most home studios or most people starting out. And you really don't need them. You can get the same effect with a tape saturation plugin, of which there's many to choose from. There are people out there restoring old mixing consoles and equipment from the 60s. I just saw this on Facebook today. Now, I don't care what operating system and computer you use. I would say they all work great. I use a Mac, lots of people use Windows, and iOS is very popular these days. And I feel the same way about your DAW. All of the DAWs share so many common capabilities. I don't think it seriously makes a difference whether you use Logic, Ableton, Studio One, Reaper, or something else. With audio interfaces, when we're trying to achieve the sounds that came out of the 40s, 50s, and 60s, any audio interface today in the $200 range or higher is going to just blow the doors off technology that was available back then. When it comes to microphones, getting a vintage microphone from the 60s is going to cost you a fortune. Some of those classic mics from those old studios are over $10,000. And does the sound matter that much? to creating good vocals? I would argue no. With the plugins we've discussed and with the audio interfaces available today, you can get great sounds from entry-level microphones. Here's two of the most popular. A Shure SM58 is easy to pick up, either new or used for around $100. It's a dynamic microphone that you can use both for live and for recording. The Audio-Technica 2020 is kind of a mainstay, entry-level condenser microphone. It's excellent value for money. If your audio interface offers 48 volts, you'll find the condenser microphones are slightly more sensitive. I've done other videos on this channel about audio interfaces and microphones and the components that you need to set up a home studio. But I think this perspective on how did we get to the point from 60 years ago to being able to have a plug-in compressor or a plug-in channel strip and how to use them, that's an interesting journey. Hey, if you found this video interesting, click on the like button. And if you have comments to add, feel free to do so. I always appreciate feedback. Consider clicking on the subscribe button and supporting the channel. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching.